morning, uh, Bells Falls, and welcome to the feed. Here we are on April 18th, and Tourism spring has sprung. Spring has sprung, especially <laughs> yeah. this week, yes. Yeah, not, not quite. We were all talking, we were just talking about the weather and how everybody who has spring break next week, like Fall Mountain, has is going to have great weather, and everybody who had spring break this week, like those falls, <laughs> didn't have such great weather. We're here today with Amy Rounds and Scott Koya. They're um, gonna, we're going to be talking with them a little bit. Scott Did I say Kyle. Them? Kyle? It's a standing joke between Mike and I. Mike is not good with names. I sometimes. am not good with names, especially so, name pronunciations. So that's my my role here. <laughs> and clacker. But she and clacker. Didn't I didn't have my clacker today. today. Anyway. But first, we're going to start with some local events, and Marty, you want to go ahead with that? We do. We have a few local events coming up. Um, first thing happening tomorrow night at the Moose Club is the annual Chamber Dinner and Person of the Year recognition. Um, it starts at 5.30. Um, there's cocktails. There's a little welcome. The dinner this year is actually maple-themed, so that should be sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. Boom, boom. And then they'll do the Person of the Year. Um, followed by an auction. Um, everyone that comes to the chamber dinner, or most everyone, provides some type of a silent, yeah, not like silent auction, piece. but centerpiece, yeah. and that's auctioned off. Um, it's a great event. I happen to have been a recipient of Chamber of the Year, so um, I would encourage person people to go year, personally right? you chamber, of the the year. chamber of the Year. But. <laughs> I didn't get a lot of sleep <laughs> last night. I have to apologize. I'm a little off my game. And then um, I also want to. you have to tour the country afterwards and be like the chamber representative? I only wish I could have had the whole tour. I really do. Okay. But I want to remind everybody about the um, women's club. We had the women's club reps here last week. We had Betty and Pat for the women's club high tea. There's only 70 tickets available. So get your tickets while you can. And then Rotary Penny Sale coming up on Saturday, May 12th. Pretty soon, um, if you own a local business or um, actually, I don't know, almost anybody, we're going to be out, we're going to be selling tickets, we're going to be soliciting prizes for the penny sale. I just wanted to reiterate to any business that is asked is the money that goes, that's that's gathered from the penny sale, and this is our main fundraiser, goes right back into the community. So yeah, if you're so donating right to, to Rotary, scholarship. you're donating to the community. And the same with the people who buy tickets. You, get, mm -hmm. you can buy a ticket for a dollar and get a chance for $500. $500. And, um, but that money goes directly to the scholarship, scholarship fund, fund. Mm -hmm. and the Rotary gives out scholarships to local um, students every, mo yep. every year. And speaking of accolades and winning yes. things, we have we amongst us the Mother of the Year. Thank Amy you. Rounds. Yeah, so that's pretty amazing. That yes, very, yes. Thank you. very well deserved, Amy. Very well deserved. How did you get, the, or who, do you know who nominated you um, or how that came Mary about? Mary Jane Bosworth, who is my handbell director, um, she actually nominated me. Oh, neat. And um, so we had to fill out a couple forms. I had to get a couple letters of recommendation. I sent those in and I won. For this <laughs> well, certain, no, it's really a well-deserved award. You, and you actually you get to go on a win. tour. You didn't win. You earned it. Yeah. I, I leave Sunday and we, I for Washington, D.C. Oh, and great. Where we have three days of a convention and a lot of women's, um, you know, things to learn about. And then um, Tuesday they uh, elect the national mother wow. of the year. Uh, that's, that's great. So, so it's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> well, you get to see, like, uh, w w do you get to see the representatives of I the do. Congress? I do. I actually have an appointment on Tuesday afternoon with um, Senator Patrick Leahy. Oh, wonderful. So I get to meet him, who I've, I've never met. Mm -hmm. So that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, that'll be great. You, could, you know, there's your chance to plug to exactly. your, 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 your topic of yes. today. <laughs> and yes, that's exactly yes, what, what my plan planning. is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that that's what your plan is, Amy. I, I, um, that's great, though. Yeah, yeah I feel that, you know, being Mother of the Year, I get to use that as a platform for, right. for a cause that I feel very passionate about, and, and that would be Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we should probably segue right into that. Let's mm -hmm. talk about Special Olympics, because yeah. um, that's what we're, one of the, the subjects we're here to talk about, and you're very involved with Special yes. Olympics. And almost to the point of you formed the... I don't want to say you formed the Special Olympics Committee here, but you've really bridged, pardon the pun, but you've bridged because it's actually our Special Olympics is in New Hampshire, right? Right. We are part of the Fall Mountain Special Olympics, which is um, in, in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. But our group actually participates with Vermont as well. Mm -hmm. So it's great that, you know, I, I before I joined Special Olympics, I didn't realize that you could be in on a New Hampshire team if you lived in Vermont. Mm -hmm. And so I found, um, literally ran into um, a special one of our athletes who was wearing a shirt and said, hey, 
how did you how did you get involved with Special Olympics? And the rest is history. Mm -hmm. So we've been involved for three plus years now. Mm -hmm. Great. And Scott, when did, okay. oh wait, just go ahead. Are we gonna ask when, when Special Olympics started? Yeah. Well, I was gonna ask Scott, yeah, how he got involved and how it how it evolved in, in, um, in right. Hampshire. Well, I have a, a daughter who is an athlete in Special Olympics and she's been, oh, 20 years. Really? Involved, so, so my wife and I have been involved for about about 20 years, mm -hmm. and uh, about five, six years ago, uh, the what we call the LPC, the coordinator, um, which is my current position, the, the gentleman who was doing it decided that he no longer wanted to do it, so we all, I ran a room looking at each other going, all yeah, right, yeah, who's next? Who's yeah. stepping up? <laughs> and I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, we talked about it, and... Uh, we put together a great team. Uh, we all work together. Amy's part of that team. And uh, there's about five of us that we sit around once a month and we talk about uh, things we need to do, events that are coming up. Um, right now, uh, we've got summer games that are coming up in June. So that's where we're focused on. Uh, we got our swimmers now practicing. Our track people are practicing inside. <laughs> I was going to say, I, hope so. are they, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. they're outside. <laughs> our, our bocce team, well, unfortunately, our bocce team, those lawn bowling, for yeah. those that don't know bocce, yeah. it's... Uh, you can't really practice that inside. We're, we're, we're waiting. Floor. We're waiting. <laughs> we, we use our, our backyard. Um, we set up a couple of courts back there, and uh, we're waiting. We still got snow. Yeah. At one point, the snow was kind of gone. Now it's back. <laughs> so we're hoping this weekend to, to be able to finally kick off. Well, you our, could start a whole team. new sport of winter. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you don't use white balls. Yeah, you don't use orange sort of styrofoam <laughs> balls or something like that. <laughs> but anyway. So, Amy, you want to tell us a little bit about yeah. Special Olympics? like. So Fall Mountain Special Olympics began in 1994. Um, Rosie Pelletier was an adaptive PE teacher at the Fall Mountain Regional High mm -hmm. School, and they created the program. Um, Fall Mountain Special Olympics is no longer technically part of the school, right. but we still have many athletes that go to that school. And we're trying to bring more athletes from Bells Falls because now, you know, because now we know about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so Scott and Maggie, they've been the um, coordinators for about 10 years now. So Special Olympics, it was, it's, it's a global movement of people creating a world of inclusion and mm -hmm. community. Um, every single person is accepted and welcomed, regardless of their ability or disability. We're helping to make the world a better, healthier, more joyful place, one athlete, one volunteer, and one family at a time. So anybody with an um, intellectual disability can join Special Olympics. So you might ask yourself, what is what is an intellectual disability? Well, intellectual disability is a term used to describe a person with certain limitations in cognitive function and other skills, including communication and self-care. Um, these limitations can cause a child to develop and learn more slowly or differently. Uh, intellectual disabilities, amazingly, happen in all cultures, races, and countries. The goal of Special Olympics is to reach out to the almost 200 million people in the world with intellectual disability. Um, through sports, our athletes are seeing themselves for their abilities, not their disabilities. Their world is open to acceptance and understanding. They become confident and empowered by their accomplishments. I can, I can attest to that, watching my daughter over the past three years. She has become so independent much more so mm -hmm. than I would have imagined. Could you tell a little bit? We actually have a picture of Liv at the, um, at the dance. Could you tell that story? Because I love that story. At the winter dance, um, at the state games up in Pico, um, she, we went to the dance, and she usually has me with her at all times, and she told me to no. She pushed <laughs> me right off the dance floor. <laughs> and it was really, it was great. It was a great moment because it was her time. Mm -hmm. And she wanted me there, you know, on the outskirts, but she didn't want me on that dance floor. She was, mm -hmm. she was all in control of it. And, and she, she looked had, pretty in control of it right she there. She had too, a yeah. great time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was great for me to see her be able to do that. And I, you know, I was proud that she didn't want me there. That you was know? what Special Olympics had given her. They've de yeah. It's given her the independence and the confidence and the friendships that she, you know, she doesn't necessarily get in her typical environment. And the events are 
uh, structured in such a way that it gives social. It's not just that you go and you you're in, in a competition. It's really a social event yes. and a, and a, like you said, a celebration. Yes, yeah. definitely. And what I love is that it doesn't matter that you're on Fall Mountain Special Olympics team. You're all on the same team, and mm-hmm. you get to know the other athletes from the other teams from all the years of the competitions. And it's it's like a it's it's like an old family reunion. Mm-hmm. It really mm-hmm. is. <laughs> It's that's great. great. Yeah. Um, so the that's part of the pro, part of the thing about um, Special Olympics is empowering uh, the athletes, you know, and giving them a sense of belonging, mm-hmm. which they don't always get in their typical environment, just because you know it's it's hard to be different sometimes. So the great thing about Special Olympics, there's no age get age limit. We have athletes who are older than us oh, on really? our team. Mm-hmm. I guess I didn't realize that. So they don't age out. So they don't a, age awesome. out. No. And um, they start as young as eight. They do have a young athletes program. Mm-hmm. We don't particularly, we don't have that program mm-hmm. with our group. Um, but we start from eight years and up. So yes. it's great. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's, it's very young. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it's very important, especially with people with disabilities, to get out and get moving because they tend to be more sedentary. Um, Livy used to play regular sports at, at um, her elementary school, and she just couldn't keep up with the kids. Mm-hmm. And it became more of a, um, you know, it was kind of dangerous when the girls got so aggressive with basketball. Yeah, yeah. She just couldn't keep up, so we had to pull her out. Probably a little bit of a stressor for her, too. Yes, you very know, stressful. Stressful environment where it should have been a fun environment. Right. It gives her the... The fun environment. Exactly. So Special Olympics was created by um, Eunice Kennedy Shriver back in the 1950s, 1960s. Um, as for some people who don't know this, but the Kennedys also had a daughter named Rosemary mm-hmm. who had an intellectual disability. And Eunice was very close to her sister Rosemary. And the, the whole family was. They played lots of sports. They sailed. They skied. They played football. Um, but Eunice realized that there wasn't a lot of pl- programs or options for people like Rosemary. So she went to college, and Rosemary stayed at home, and she, um, Eunice was quite the athlete in college. She decide, started to realize how much sports could be a common ground to unite mm-hmm. people. And so she decided to start a summer day camp for young people with intellectual disabilities. And what she really wanted to focus on was not to dwell on what they could not do, but what they could do. That's a powerful, powerful mm-hmm. change in the semantics. Yes, mm-hmm. very much so. And, of course, having uh, President John F. Kennedy in the White House really helped <laughs> because she was the driving force to who created the White House panel for people with intellectual disabilities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in the 1970s, amazingly, what, it, what the idea that started in the United States soon started branching out to other countries. Um, and... By the 1980s, Special Olympics programs were in more than 50 countries on every major um, continent. In 1983, an estimated 4,000 athletes attended the International Special Olympics Summer Games in Louisiana. Um, In 1989 was the launch of the Special Olympics Unified Sports Initiative, which brings together people with and without disabilities on the same team. Oh, that's an interesting, yeah. Very, um, yeah. Fall Mountain yeah. Regional High School, Brattleboro, uh, Keene, uh, Leland and Gray, they, mm-hmm. and even Springfield, they all have unified teams. Um, it's a, How does that work? Well, you take, um, you have your, your athletes with disabilities, and then you have your typical athletes, mm-hmm. and they play on the same team. Usually a lot of it's bowling, a lot of it basketball mm-hmm. is very popular, soccer mm-hmm. is too. Mm-hmm. And they have a little bit different rules. I don't know enough about it, but they, they're allowed to play, and it's just more of a, you know, it's more of a slower pace mm-hmm. and a little bit more like it's okay if you double dribble mm-hmm. yeah. a couple yeah. times, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just gives just you, you know, just gives them, but they're, they, and Bellas Falls, unfortunately, is the only school that does not have a unified team mm-hmm. yet, but we will be working on that oh, in a couple really? of years. Oh, really? Good for you. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. It, it allows... Yes, it's it's good for both sides, and I think what's even really great because you have your you have your star athletes who are on your varsity teams, mm-hmm. but you have a lot of kids who want to play and aren't going to make the varsity team, so they yeah, could actually yeah. help out their peers, you know, their mm-hmm. their disabled peers, and have be on the team and have just as much fun because mm-hmm. a lot of kids they just want to play, they mm-hmm. don't necessarily want to be you know on the varsity team, and they're not going to get a chance to play, mm-hmm. so it's a win win for both. Yeah. 
That's a, an amazingly good point because a lot of kids don't get to play. Right. Because, right. Yeah. So Fall Mountain, what do we do? Well, we do bowling, we do alpine skiing, we do snowboarding, uh, snowshoe racing, track, bocce, and swimming. So our biggest team sport is bowling, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is fun all the Surprise. way around. Surprise! Yeah. Yeah. It starts. It's in, the shoes. It's isn't the it? shoes, definitely. <laughs> it, it starts in September and we go through November, and then immediately after the state games, we start our winter sports. And our winter sports, we offer this uh, the snowshoe racing, the alpine skiing, the snowboarding, and then in the spring we offer the swimming, the track, and the bocce. So wow. come, do you have a, a year-round schedule that keeps pretty busy? Yes, we only take the summer off because uh, the state games um, in New Hampshire end the first weekend of June. Mm -hmm. And then we give the athletes the, the whole summer off and then we start back up in September for nice. bowling. So each season has a regional event and then they have a state event. The state events are usually two days of competition except for bowling. That's only one day. Um, the great thing, like I was telling you before, we participate in Vermont, so we always go to the Vermont uh, Winter Games. Mm -hmm. And this year, we had them at PICO, which was our mm -hmm. first year there. And this just shows you how much um, Special Olympics has grown, because we, they've been doing it at Suicide 6 in Queechee for years. And it got to be the point that we were just, just like, yeah. we were like sardines, we couldn't move. Yeah. PICO was excellent. It was a great venue. It was plenty of room, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And the snow conditions were awesome. Um, when you have a state gate, uh, the states, we usually stay overnight, um, sometimes in hotels, sometimes at UNH, we stay in the dorms. Mm -hmm. And then um, they usually have a dance. As you know, the dances are yeah, very, yeah. very cool. That's one of the most important things, I would imagine. Yes, the dance definitely <laughs> is. Um, the state games for summer at UNH, another great facility, excellent facility. Um, they had a great opening ceremony last year. It was cold there last year, very mm -hmm. cold. But it was, you know, they have the fireworks, they had the torch run. The athletes just have a great time. It's an amazing time for the athletes. It really is. And I bet the parents, too. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I, I mean, I have, a, I have a ball there, too. And it's, it's just, I love watching all the athletes. I think it's amazing watching um, some of the athletes um, compete. It's, it's just amazing. What they can and you've do. probably, since you've been doing it for quite a few years, you've probably seen a lot of growth in the athletes. Yes. Like you, I know you've seen it in, in, in Live, but have you, you probably see it across the board. Definitely. Definitely. We had, we had a new swimmer this year, and he, he's an older gentleman, and he was very nervous about swimming. And when we first, the first practice, he was wearing a flotation. And by the end of the two hours, we had him without the flow. <laughs> And now he's ready to do the relay race with the other with the other athletes. We're going to try a relay this year, and so it's just amazing to see. And we have a, we have a couple new swimmers this year, and they're they're really great additions to the team. They really are. Good for you. Makes for a long day for you though, because I know you're a runner also, yes. and you work full time, and you're a Special Olympics supporter and a mother. Yes. So I can understand why you might win this Mother of the Year, <laughs> Person of yes, the Year award. It's I, like I can super see it as very well deserved. Very. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So what is, what is the time commitment though, Amy? On the like realistically, what's your time commitment to? Well, we usually practice on Sundays. Mm -hmm. So um, the swimmers right now we we start at eight and we swim to 10 and we use the uh, Claremont Rec Center. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, again, excellent facility, they've been great to us. Um, and in the winter time, it's usually the same. We usually start at one and it goes to three. In bowling, it's one to three mm -hmm. on Sundays. And our, and our athletes are required to practice. It's, it's, it's just like any yeah, other sport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, um, they're expected to try hard, to compete fairly, to follow the rules, to do their best, respect their coaches and their fellow athletes. But they're, you know, they need to have fun too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's another thing. Um, so we and we have multiple volunteers. You know, mostly parents. Um, I'm just going to ask you that. How, if someone was interested, how does that work? We always are looking for volunteers. There's a form to fill out, yep. mm -hmm. and um, that's that's pretty much it. Um, just contacting, getting in touch with Maggie or Scott, and um, they. We are always looking. We actually have somebody this year who's helping us with our, um, just helping us coach our swimmers a little bit, just giving us a little bit, because I don't really know much about swimming, yeah. <laughs> and so it was and really nice to do that. If yeah. you're interested, we do have the number. 
post it up on the screen right now. So please feel free to call because that, that's something that they really could use your help with. Definitely. So hopefully yeah. your phone will be burning up after this show. There yes. you go. All our, all our uh, people will be <coughs> calling you. So tell us a little bit about um, the funding of Special Olympics because that was intriguing. You were telling us ahead of time. It is. Um, what's, what a lot of people don't realize is when you when you get the solicita solicitations in the mail from Special Olympics, mm -hmm. when you donate to Special Olympics, you're donating to the big organization. And what they're doing with that money is they're advertising, they're making products, they're tra doing trademark. They're, you know, there's a lot of insurance involved with Special Olympics. But if you want to support your local team, you need to donate directly to your local team. Mm -hmm. that's, I think that's um, a real important point. It's very important because when, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I, I already donate to Special Olympics. But if you're not donating to your local team, they're not getting that money. So it's it really, and we, we are on our own for fundraising. Mm -hmm. We do a solicitation letter every year. We also do fundraisers. Uh, we are very lucky to be in a community that has been very supportive of us. Mm -hmm. And you know the Rotary clubs have been great to us, and um, you know we're 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 lucky. But as any volunteer organization knows, you can always yeah. use more oh, money. Yeah. 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 And you have a lot of obviously a lot of travel and you know venues that you go to that that takes that takes a lot of money. And the organization and the, the weekly practices and food and, right. and all that stuff. Wow, right. it's crazy. Exactly. I mean, we're lucky. Like the, the you know, the rec center gave us a, a nice discount, but not all p places can give you mm -hmm. a discount. You know, they're 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 on a tight budget as well. Yeah, yeah. So, and you know, our bowling our bowling place always gives us a nice discount too. But there's gonna there's sometimes they can't give a discount because think times are hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, we. But it's a really good distinction that you need to, to donate to your local yes. Special Olympics because of the because that's who you. Would Sort of like shopping local. Kind of like shopping local, yes, yeah. yes. When, exactly. when you donate you wanna, local, when you, you shop local, you want the money to stay, stay local, local, you need to donate to the local group. How do, yeah. how do other than just calling, do you have a, a website or a way, to, or, or is that like not quite there? Just, they would just call you? They we, could, we do have a, a site on Facebook. Oh, mm -hmm. good, okay. good. Um, just simply Fall Mountain yep. Special Olympics. Yep. Um, other than that, I think that's the only venue we have at this time. Okay. Um, which which nice will have some pictures. Know. It has pictures of yeah. all yeah, the yeah, athletes. Yeah. I, yep. we, we left that open, right? We didn't close right, it. Right, it's not closed. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, but uh, yeah, we do have that. Absolutely. So, Amy, could you tell us, like, so someone was watching and someone um, either had a special um, a, a, a child at home that they would like to get involved, but maybe they were a little hesitant because we are talking about the time commitment and we're talking about a lot of things. What advice would you give them? It's worth it. It's so worth it. Um, I mean, we, we stumbled upon um, Fall Mountain, and we were so happy to do it. And it's been the biggest, it's been the most important thing in our family. It really is. It's, we work around Special Olympics. Um, this year, for example, the winter games were during the week. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, had, I took the time yeah. off from work, and Libby missed school because it's that important. It's very important for her, and it's important for me to make sure that she has that um, the the inclusion the mm -hmm. um, and she loves it and I and honestly I I love our team I mean they are just a great group of people all how, of them how many athletes do you have we have on our bowling team which is the biggest we have about twenty five wow wow yeah <laughs> our winter great. sports team is the smallest mm -hmm. and then our, <laughs> like I said, our, our, <laughs> swim, our swim team we have I think eight this year which mm -hmm. is pretty big mm -hmm. last year we only had I think or four. Wow, that's great. Our bocce team is pretty big too. Yep, it is. Yeah. We have one of our bocce players that's going to be playing in what they call the USA Games, which is where the United States like yeah. Olympics do. Yeah, yeah. They all come together and uh, she's in bocce and she'll, she'll be playing this year and they're out in Oregon, is it? Uh, Seattle. Seattle. Yep. Wow. Wow. Very, Washington. very yeah. cool that uh, yeah, Rachel great. is going. It must be a pretty big support for the family, so too, because like you said, it's sort of it. It's not like it's it happens all across all um, income groups, all areas. So it's not like there's like the. There, it's just must be nice to find people that you can you know, relate nice. to and talk to and support each other. And it's very nice. I mean, it, you know, the community, we're lucky that we live in a small community and they are very supportive. 
but it's a different support when you're sitting with a gr group of yeah. parents who've been and there, done that, and they realize, you know, it's, um, you know, a perfect example is the mom who had to throw her kid into the pool last year at the state games from another team. And now a lot of people might think, whoa, that's that's awful. Mm -hmm. That's the only way she could get her child in. And that, that athlete won three gold medals. Wow. She just could not get in the pool. She the had conference. this thing about yeah. getting in the mm -hmm. pool. So her mom just literally pushes her mm -hmm. and three gold medals. That's awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. That is very cool. So you don't have to explain why you do weird things. I think, you know? I think you told me that one. I think, I think we had that. I was trying to remember, we, we talk a lot, and you, I think, had said that, that yeah, you totally got something. There's yeah. Another parent was going through something that, that, that normally might have been kind of judged, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But you got it. I got it. And that's, I think, an important, for both the athletes and the parents. And I think Definitely. that's the, the more important thing to, if there's maybe parents out there watching, that, that it's a place for you too. Yes, definitely, definitely. Well, thank you for coming on. Thank we're going to, uh, I forgot to press our timer again. Marty, help me <laughs> out. But I think we're getting close and we're going to go to a clip before we leave. But um, as, uh, as Alex gets the clip ready, I wanted to say thanks for coming on. Thank you. Good luck with your trip next week. That'll thank be fantastic. Um, when do you leave? I leave Sunday. Oh, wonderful. And I'll then, be back Wednesday. Oh, great. Well, say, say hi to Senator Leahy for me. I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll remember. Yeah, he'll remember. Just say hi from Mark. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you for having us on. Well, Thank, Thank you so you. much. You so and uh, much. I think we're going to go to clip. And, and thanks, Bella's Faults. We'll see you next week. Bye, Katie. Bye. Bye. And Kate and Robert and Kathy. It says, thinking you on St. Patrick's Day. May the road rise up to meet you. And may the wind always be at your back. Oh my goodness, there's Nicole. Yes, we came back a week ago from Florida, and I wanted to be here for Memorial Day because I, I love... About the alumni parade. Oh yeah, we'll be here, we'll be, I'll be here through November. Do you fly up or drive? No, we drive, because we need a vehicle. That's the way to do it, you see everything is beautiful. Oh yeah. You want to look very busy someday out there? Who's watching your show today? Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Really? You're building that? Fuzzy Rabbit looked at the fairy on top of the tree. I'm glad, he said. You'll see Santa when he comes. Robert put some cookies on a plate. So, and where's Girl Bear? I guess she's off with Heather. I think there's something special to, about this past week, right, Mira? What? Hey, Mira, happy birthday. Oh, gosh, my birthday. My birthday's the 22nd. <laughs> Week. I have a pair of binoculars in my drawer because I'm a nosy neighbor. Well, they help you see <laughs> Sometimes I can't really see what's going on. Get them binoculars out. Then you can see. Yeah. <laughs> First, I usually look at birds. <laughs> um, Love alone is capable of uniting living beings in such a way as to complete and fulfill them. Thank you for watching. That's it, folks, for the feed. Be sure to catch us every Wednesdays at 7.30 a.m. Also, find us on Facebook at Fact TV, or tell us what you think, thefeed8 at gmail.com. And don't forget to watch the feed online at www.fact8.com.